Hotel Echo, Lima, Lima, Oscar. Good evening. Yes, it's been long, long overdue. Good morning, good afternoon, or in some cases, good night and rest well and good health. I'm your host, your guy himself, the one and only and truly, DLG Reppy. Otherwise short for Dele, London, Guna, Space, Romeo, Echo, Papa, Papa, Indigo, November. And this is a day for Arsenal to play again. Always 24 hours before Arsenal play again. And the reason why I'm doing the back day preview for the away game against Watford. This is um, three points that we are, we must go for we are to stand a chance of finishing in the top four for the first time in about six years, I believe. Well, maybe seven years. Anyway, um, Watford, on the other hand, tomorrow's opponents, they're fighting against relegation. Last weekend out, they went to Manchester United and um, were fortunate to get a point, fortunate to get a clean sheet in the goalless draw. Well, Watford... I will tell you this, a Watford football team under the management of Roy Hodgson. Roy Hodgson will have his um, football teams well organised at the back, very disciplined, and they will not give much away. Well, in this case, um, last weekend, they were um, found wanting many a times where Man United got in behind their defence, but they just couldn't finish their dinner. That was the end result of it. Where Watford, on the other hand, they look um, dangerous on the counter-attack and we've got to be very, very careful by not allowing Watford too many opportunities to launch counter-attacks. Well, I'm here to pick the best 11 I possibly believe should um, start against Watford. And it's for the best of the team. I'm going to pick the strongest bench possible. And the formation I'm picking is 4-2-3-1. From our point of view, we've been on a good bit of run of form. We've won the last three league games. Um, maybe not convincingly, but we've won the last three league games. We're on a bit of form. We've found some confidence. And one thing about this Arsenal team of right now, the resilient is more superior than it has been in the last two, three, maybe four years. So, um, yeah, I'm pleased with the um, short, well, little amount of progress that's going on. And I've got to say, well done to the team for the last game. Well done to Mikel Arteta in the last game, even though I give him the nickname Mikel whatever. Anyway, before I get started, yeah, make sure you smash the thumbs up like button for me. Please do so. Please help me by... Um, sharing this channel virally all o- all over the world, especially to your friends and your relatives. And if any one of you are watching from your, f- if any one of your friends, any one of your f- relatives are watching, yeah, please um, encourage them to um, smash the sh- um, share button for me, yeah. Um, drop a message of positive feedback, um, an opinion, all, all, all underneath the positive feedback um promotion that I always um put out there yeah leave it in the comment section below and yes subscribe to the channel especially to you to your new people rent if you've got friends or relatives that are watching me right now encourage them to subscribe to the channel that's myself DLG repping and if you subscribe I'll shout you out yeah like I did with Adam Kelly massive shout out to yourself Adam Kelly big up yourself Big up yourself, Levi. Big up yourself, Music Beast. Big up yourself, Richard Singh. And anyone else who I've forgotten to big up, yeah? Big up your damn selves, yeah? And encourage your friends and relatives to subscribe. Let's keep, let's keep this channel going. Right, without further ado, Watford v Arsenal match day preview. And I'm going to start with off with the first 11. So in goal, our number one, Aaron Ramsdale. For me, you see the character and passion installed with this guy's heart. Everything about him. Not just the save at Leicester City, but um, his presence, you know, 
in command of every set piece that um, faces us. You know, I like the way he, tap, um, he patted Gabriel on the shoulder and told him to keep his head up and keep going. For me, that's a sign of a character and one of, and another leader in the dressing room that we do need. And we do need leaders, especially towards this business end of the season. This is where it's like 12 or 13 cup finals left. Ramsdale starts in goal. Right, the back four. <clears throat> if he is deemed fit, he starts for me. I'm calling for Takahiro Tomiyasu, Japanese international and Arsenal first choice right back, number one disputed. For me, Cedric Suarez has done well. He may start tomorrow because he has um, performed um, amazingly well in the time that he's been called upon. If Tommy Yesu is fit, um, I'm going to go with him. So, Takahiro Tommy Yesu. The centre-half, as part of the back four, Benjamin White. For me, he starts this game as he's um, proven, he's, not just his worth, but he's, pro he's proven um, a lot of the doubters wrong that um, he would not be able to make it at a bigger club than Arsenal, a big club like Arsenal well. He's made it at a bigger club than Brighton with the with the best and the greatest of respect to Brighton over Albion. He's signed from from them, got into the Arsenal first team. He's knuckled down and he's put in um, exceptional performances. For me, he's as solid as they come. Benjamin White. And I've often said that, um, you know what, he can be as good as John Terry, if not better. He's partner in crime. Well... The gentleman, the man from the favelas in Brazil. He comes. He goes by the name of um, Gabriel dos Santos Magalis from Sao Paulo, Brazil. For me, always performs um, consistently well for us. Um, he's been our best centre-half at the club, hands down. And for me, oh, I like the presence he shows. His ability in the air, whether it is his pace, his strength, his aggression, he's got the lot. For me to succeed in the Premier League. Gabriel dos Santos Magalis. He starts alongside Ben White. Left back, Kieran Tierney. I mean, maybe the last game he wasn't so um, effective from his um, crossing ability. From his crossing into the final third. However, he's as solid as they come. Um, well, not in the last game where um, Nelson Semedo um, had him on toast. And that worries me because he's going to be up against Ismail Assar and Ismail Assar is extremely quick. So Tierney's going to have to be at his um, goal side best, should I say. And uh, we need him to be switched on for 90 minutes defensively. But offensively, he can cause enough problems as possible. Kieran Tierney left back. Right, the two in front of the midfield. Thomas Partey, for me, since he's come back from the African Cup of Nations and he's found that form. And even before he went, to, even just before he went to the African Cup of Nations with Ghana, should I say, he performed exceptionally well against Man City. He's come back into the team and he has been terrific in his um, performance. He's winning tackles, interceptions. His um, final pass is reaching the red and white shirt from a forward perspective. And he sees a good forward pass and he's, Picking Arsenal, he's picking out the Arsenal attacking players out, whether it be Sacco, Smith Rowe, Odegaard, Martinelli. He's picking them out and he's um, starting up attacks. For me, he starts. Um, alongside him, Granit Xhaka. Now, for me, he's another one who performed well in the red and white shirt. He's not put a foot wrong. Yes, he may go for a reckless tackle here. He may risk a red card and he may be that red card waiting to happen. But one thing with Granit Xhaka. He doesn't shy away as much as he would have done in previous um, years where he's um, more responsible for wanting the ball from the defence. And he shows more responsibility and more, um, you know, stewardship in his um, seniority because he's one of the senior players. And um, I expect that from him. Granit Xhaka alongside Partey for me. Right. The three in front of them two. 
Well, Kyle Saka, yet again, he starts. I mean, I wish I could be in a position to rest him, but this is of this is um, a game of importance and um, he can make a big difference here. He's had 10 days. He's had up to, well, since last Thursday to rest, so I wouldn't expect any excuses, you know. But I, I don't say that with him. I say that with every Arsenal player or any Arsenal 11 who start this game. And Bakayo Saka, I would select him in, into this game. I think he's got, whether he'll be up against any Rose Messina, he has the Montos and the, the full ability he has. I can trust him to um, produce the goods. In the middle, oh, this is a big one. Oh, I've been thinking about this for days and days. I'm going to go with Emil Smith-Rowe on the... I'm going to go with Emil Smith-Rowe in the middle here. Um, I do like the fact that um, <coughs> he has performed well when asked to play wide on the, on the on the left. But I prefer him in the middle because I think there is a game where he can um, affect the play. And not only will he score, not only will he be a goal for it, but he can be an, an assist for another Arsenal player to score. So, Emil Smith-Rowe, and he's the only one in the entire squad who's got ten, nearly 10 Premier League goals. On the left, I'm going to go with um, Gabriel Martinelli. Yeah, I'm going to go with Gabriel Martinelli, even though I would want him up top. But the, for the same, for the simple reason is, um, I feel that... Um, he can take it to Watford's right back, whether it be Kiko Firmino or Ngetia. And on top of that, yeah, we haven't got the ball, and um, what it's made a size attacking Kieran Tierney. I can promise you, Gabriel Martinelli will do his best to get back and um, help his um, colleague and double up as much as he can possibly can, as much as he possibly can double up because it's made a size is quick and he's a danger. On the other side, I've gone for Takahiro Tomiyasu because Dennis will be a problem and he will pose us a threat. Right, and Joshua King, he's always a threat in front of a goal. Very strong and athletic and very quick as well. So, you know, I've gone for the best defence possible. But um, picking the rest of the team, I've gone with Gabriel Martinelli because he's tenacious and... Um, he fights hard and works hard, which is the minimum requirement of a footballer. But for me, he's a goal threat. And he will cause, and I hope he causes Watford as much problem as, prob as much problems as possible, as long as he's, he's been given the ball in the right areas of the pitch. Up top, Alexander Lacazette. Now, everything about him, you can't afford him. The only thing that he's missing is um, goals. And he has not scored a Premier League goal since December, I believe. So that's like, three months. It's, a, it's far too long to wait for a Premier League goal. And um, having up Eddie Nketiah from the bench, it doesn't inspire as much confidence in me to believe that he'll get a, uh, get a Premier League goal this season, let alone a Premier League goal. So this is just um, something that um, concerns me. However, that's my um, starting eleven. Now I'm going to go to the subs bench. Um, Bird Leno will have to start off. We'll start from the bench. Um, he's definitely got to be pushing for a recall. Maybe that will be the best. Maybe that will come um, tomorrow. You never know. But the best thing I can give him is the bench. Um, Cedric Suarez on the bench. He's done well in the last two games. But um, Takahiro Tomiyasu has done well for the bulk of the season at right back. And um, I would like to see him continue in that position. Um, right, with Cedric Suarez, I'm going to go with substitute number three. Rob Holding. Um, I wouldn't play him in the back four. I think playing him in the back three is ideal for me because we get balls in the air, he wins them. And um, I feel that he's more confident 
playing in the three than he is in the two because Gabriel Magalhães and Benjamin White, they're very um, confident and comfortable with um, the ball at their feet. And when they haven't got the ball at their feet, they are making crucial tackles and interceptions together. So Rob Holding for me, he's on the bench because I don't think he has that presence about him as a, as a t number two centre-half. <clears throat> If you play the back three, maybe you can have him as a uh, number three center half. So I'm going to go with um, holding as my fourth substitution. My fifth substitution, Nuno Tavares. Um, for me, very raw, but a raw talent. But one thing I will say about Nuno Tavares, if we can get a coach to work with him every day after training, we might, we not might, but we will see a better left back, all round better left back, and he will be one for the future. I can tell you, Albert and Boyo Sambi Lokonga love this player. I think this play. I think this guy is gonna go on to be a superstar in his own right. I mean, even during the season, at the beginning of the season, he showed me signs of um, dominating midfield um, battles, um, dominating the game in midfield. I think we've got a hell of a prospect. For me, he's just a raw talent who needs um, to be looked after for certain games. Um, would he come into this team? I mean, I would have him instead of Shaka, but there you go. Substitute number seven. Oh. Excuse me. Substitute number seven, Nicola Pepe. For me, he has to, he's the only player that I can... Rely on to come onto the bench, come off from the bench and make an impact, like he did against Wolves. Uh, for me, he's got a massive point to prove for himself, not just for Arsenal, not just for us Arsenal fans, but for himself. And he's playing for his future. It's as simple as bench number seven, substitute number eight, um, Amari Hudsonson, um, a young kid from the. Youth Academy, and all I can say is he's he's gonna have to wait his time. I've heard um some, I've heard um some serious positive talks from coaches and how they really talk highly of him. So let's hope he gets his own chance um at some point. He will get his chance. We just don't know if it's gonna be this season. I doubt it personally. Eddie and Ketia, I'll expect him to come off from the bench because. That's how um, Arteta must view, view him. I mean, I wouldn't even have him on my bench. I just don't rate the guy. I just don't think he's um, at the quality um, that we need required. And we need to um, an upgrade on him as well as Lacazette. But with Eddie and Ketia, he does, he does chase the ball down. You know, he hunts the ball down and he's um, on defenders who, who have the ball at their feet. That's fine. But I want to see a lot more than that. So he's on my bench. Right, that's um, my substitutions completed. Along with this starting 11. And yeah, formation is sorted. 4 2 3 1. If you've got a score prediction, leave it in the comment section below. I'll say, I did say 2 to 3 goals. I'll say it would be 1. I think Arsenal will win this game by 1 or 2 clear goals. But if you feel differently, leave your um, score prediction in the comment section below other than that i'm out of here ladies and gentlemen to the boys to the girls let me once again say thanks for listening thanks for tuning in thanks for watching saving the best to last thank you so much for putting up with me um i look forward to um producing another video hopefully um my plan is to be at vicarage road tomorrow so i'm quite excited about that my first away game out of London to watch the Arsenal. So watch out for me, maybe near or just outside Vicarage Road. Until next time. Oh, whoops, what am I saying? Until then, um, I wish you all a good night and do enjoy yourselves. Take care of your friends, take care of your family, take care of yourselves. Stay safe. Until next time, DLG Repping will we'll be talking again. Peace, love and bless again.
you know how I am. Always keep it as level-headed as possible. Just please be nice.